Hi, uh, welcome to this particular module. Uh, this is one of the most important uh, aspect in cancer when it comes to uh, selecting a particular therapy. Uh, treating cancer uh, is not very difficult in my opinion. Early diagnosis is more important right uh, and that is why that is where the uh, novel devices that can early diagnose cancer uh, becomes extremely important. But let us say if we diagnose a person suffering from cancer, what kind of treatment we can give so that we can save the person's life. Now, traditionally we are what, what we are using chemotherapy we all know right and uh, in one of the module I have shown you how to design a device for rapid drug screening in case of chemotherapy. So, if you remember it was a patient centric platform where you can take the cells from the patient you can load in the device with matrigel, you can flow different drugs and depending on the efficacy of the drug, we will be getting different electrical signatures right, we have seen that. Having said that chemotherapy is not so effective this is what the statistics is. And it has lot of side effects you may have observed a patient suffering from cancer if given chemotherapy goes to lot of side effects one being losing lot of hairs right and what not immune system goes down uh, the weight decreases. Uh, appetite uh, is different, the person is agitated right. So, what are the other techniques to treat cancer? Now, uh, there is a radiation therapy. Radiation therapy has been used after chemotherapy and again there are lot of side effects. So, recently the research has been focused on developing immunotherapy and we have in market few immunotherapy drugs. Now, as the name suggests immunotherapy that means, a therapy that is related to your immune system right. So, what is this therapy? Now, again uh, as an engineer or as a scientist or as a researcher whether you are clinician or you are a student it is important to develop a patient centric platform. So, if there are three different immunotherapy drugs which drug would be more effective for that particular patient. So, how can we do that? And where exactly this immunotherapy uh, is used right. So, today in this module or set of modules 
we will learn how to design a microfluidic chip that can be used to evaluate the efficacy of the immunotherapy drugs performance of the immunotherapy drugs. So, let us see, let us understand what is immunotherapy and let us see one aspect of how our device can potentially solve a very important clinical problem that is bridging the clinician not a, not exactly a clinician, but a patient and a drug a system that bridges a patient and a drug and helps the clinician to determine which drug to give to a patient. Let us see. So, if you see the screen we will be talking about if you see the screen we will be talking about a microfluidic chip for evaluating the efficacy of immunotherapy drugs. Right. So, what we see on the screen we will be talking about a patient centric in vitro platform for evaluating the efficacy of immunotherapy drugs. Now, if you see several cancers right now, so if you talk about stomach cancer stomach cancer is fifth most common and third most deadly cancer worldwide. Stomach cancer or gastric cancer is a core focus of immune based treatment clinical trials today. If we talk about lung cancer, lung cancer is the most common type of cancer worldwide and immunotherapy is greatly improving treatment and prognosis for patients with lung cancer. If we talk about head and neck right oral cancer head and neck is uh, oral cancer is a part of head and neck cancer is relatively uncommon, but serious cancer immunotherapies are showing significant promise with other approaches which have failed. So, immunotherapy is showing a promising result. When you talk, you talk about prostate cancer, it is one of the most commonly occurring cancer, particularly uh, for white people. Immunotherapy is an exciting area of treatment for prostate cancer. Again, immunotherapy can be used for prostate cancer. Brain cancer, or you can say uh, malignant brain tumors, are rare but very serious form of cancer. Again, immunotherapy is showing promising results. Breast cancer, like we know, is the second largest cause of death in women, cancer related death in women worldwide and also in India. And immunotherapy is used for treating uh, cancer, collateral cancer again one of the common type of cancer. Cervical cancer typically caused by human uh, HPV virus and it is one of the major cancer types for which immunotherapy treatments are being developed. So, what exactly immunotherapy is? Hmm? Immunotherapy is a type of cancer treatment that helps your immune system fight cancer right. So, first, first thing that we, we need to understand is that it is a therapy that helps our immune system to fight cancer. The immune system helps your body fight infections and other diseases and as we know the immune system is made up of what white blood cells and organs and tissues of lymph system. 
Immunotherapy has been recently used as a novel therapy approach to treat melanoma, lung, kidney, bladder and breast cancer. It is now widely accepted that effective immune response by infiltrating T cells, we will study about T cells, is limited by immunosuppressive environment present by the tumor. The overall survival of the patient with melanoma, breast, collateral and lung cancer can be predicted by CD4, CD8, T cell ratio in tumor macro environment and whole blood. Increase in CD8 T cells along with other immune cell subsets in presence of immunomodulator is an indicator of effective therapy. What does this sentence mean? Increase in CD8 T cells other with, with other immune cell subsets in presence of an immunomodulator is an indicator for effective therapy. Hmm? So, let us see, let us see. We all know blood, right? Just help you out. RBCs, red blood cells, white blood cells, plasma. This thing we know, correct? Blood, RBCs, white blood cells, and plasma. Okay, good. Now, white. blood cells. These are our immune cells, immune cells helps for keeping our immune system intact. Now, there is something called thymus cells or T cells, T cells. Okay. T cells if we divide it there is CD4, CD8, Treg. Hmm? CD4 is helper cells, or CD4 cells are helper cells. CD8 cells are killer cells, and Treg, as its name suggests, are regulatory cells. So, when a patient suffers from cancer, he is given a immunomodulator or immunotherapy drug and the concentration or the ratio of CD4 and CD8 is measured to see whether the immune system has been activated to kill cancer or not. So, CD8 level is higher compared to CD4 or not or, or a comparative ratio. This can be found in the blood of the patient CD4, CD8 can be found or from the blood of the patient using flow cytometry analysis it is also called fax flow cytometry analysis all right so now we at least know that okay white blood cells and then in that white blood cells we have t cells in t cells we have cd4 cells we have cd8 cells and we have t regulatory cells right. So, what we will do with that? This is so how to take this T cells right T cells are thymus cells they can be obtained from blood like I said they can also we can also get T cells from spleen, spleen okay. spleen of, a, of the mice. So, this is a video where uh, it is shown how the mice is operated uh, actually how we can take the spleen from the mice. So, that spleen when you take it out when you look at the video first look at the video and see how the spleen is taken uh, from the uh, mice. Okay, so, for today's uh, extraction you are going to need two sets of forceps and a small pair of scissors. Sorry, is that too close? Okay. So first, spray the mouse or pin the mouse to the board. Uh, spray it down with seventy percent ethanol. 
give it a nice little wipe. So this is so that um, the fur doesn't stick to your scissors as much. And then what we do is pull the skin up and make an incision at the bottom. And then you'll see this filmy layer here. You, what you want is the tip of your scissors to go through, through that. And then you're going to cut up. So you're cutting basically the layer of film and also through the skin. Uh, and you're going to cut all the way through the sternum. Okay. And so now you're going to make some incisions on the sides. Uh, and this is just to open it up to see what you're working with. So it's not necessary, but you can pin this if you want to get a better look. Um. Okay, so now you see the general area that we want to work with. Um, so this is the liver here, this is the intestines. And so what you want to do is kind of move this all uh, to the left, and so this exposes here the liver, here's the spleen in, in between, and then here is the um, kidney. And so it could be a little bit difficult to tell between the three, but the spleen should be in the middle, and it should be long um, and kind of solid as opposed to the liver, which is very squishy. Okay, so now you kind of take the spleen out, and you pull the fibers off, uh, and you do this slowly so that the spleen doesn't rip, because even though it's pretty... Um, firm, it can still rip. Okay, so now I've extracted the spleen, and I'm going to try to make sure that there's no remaining fat or fiber. Someone's calling us. Okay, and so now you can still see the kidneys here and the liver here, and so the spleen was right here. Um, and now all you have to do is take that put it into a 50 ml conical um, full of media. So this is complete media and just drop it in. And that's it. Okay. So as you have seen in the video, the spleen that is taken out from the mice or from the mouse will be placed in a RPMI 1640 media and further to extract T cells from splints, the each splint will be placed on a 40 micrometer cell strainer and crushed with a flat end of a syringe. Cells that pass with will be centrifuged and washed with PBS to obtain splenocytes. From spleen we get splenocytes. What does it mean? If we take this kind of uh, tube and we have filter right which is our 40 micron cell strainer and you put a spleen on this and you crush the spleen. cross the spleen with syringe, with a syringe you cross the spleen, this is spleen, right, there is a media here and the cells will come out from the spleen when you crush it, these cells would be nothing but your splenocytes, okay. the spleen is obtained from the mice. Now, after you obtain splenocytes, what you will do? The native T cells or sorry naive T cells, T cells which are not activated right naive, naive T cells will be isolated from this splenocytes using easy step mouse T cell enrichment kit from stem cell technologies right. So, what we are doing after we get splenocytes, we can extract T cells from this splenocytes with the help of easy sap mouse T cell enrichment kit. This is obtained from 
we can get it from stem cell technologies. Hmm. Similarly, T cells from mouse PBMC will also be isolated. So, we can get T cells. Now, so from the spleen we have seen how we can extract T cells. We can also extract T cells from mouse PBMC. In that case, blood will be transferred to a vial with a 9 ml distilled H2O and mixed by a inverting a couple of times. This will kill the red blood cells. Immediately after mixing 1 ml of 10 x HBSS or 10 x PBS will be added. This will cancel the osmotic pressure of pure water and stop the lysis process. Right? Cells will be spun down and supernant discarded. PBMCs will be resuspended into the media. So, once you have T cells, then what you do? Once you have T cells, what you do? You have to activate these T cells. Why? Because in our immune systems, the T cells are activated. So, you have to study lymph node, lymph node, how lymph node helps in our immune system. So, in immune system these T cells are act in activated condition, right. But what we get from cell from blood or from the uh, uh, spleen we get naive T cells. So, once we get these T cells, these T cells will be cultured, we have to culture these T cells in 96 file plate in immunocult media, this is a media specially for uh, culturing the T cells and stimulated with dynamids. So, dynamids are used to activate these T cells. Hmm. So, that we have the activated T cells along according to manufacturer's protocol and then we can study these activated T cells with either APC red anti mouse or F FITC red anti mouse CD444 antibodies. So, do not get confused, right. this is a procedure to uh, uh, activate T cells, it is known by uh, a cancer oncologist, uh, it is extremely easy process if you follow the protocol, right. We have we are learning this, so to understand what kind of device we are using and how it will be used to, uh, uh, how it will be used in immunotherapy. So, that is why we are learning that what are T cells, what are T cell isolation kits, uh, from where T cells we can obtain, what are the kind of T cells, when you understand T cells we have seen CD4, we have seen CD8, we have seen T regulatory cells, then what are naive cells, when we obtain the cells from the blood or from the spleen, it are naive cells, they are not activated. So, to activate it, because we are developing the in vitro platform, that is the platform that we are using in the uh, laboratory, right. So, how can we activate those T cells, that is what we are learning. But uh, uh, the idea is not to really go down into depth of understanding how the T cell forms, no. We have to understand what kind of device I can use to understand immunotherapy. But to understand how we can design this device, we have to go through the steps, okay guys. So, do not get confused, it is very easy. So, if you see the screen, uh, this is uh, uh, quickly I have taken a uh, video of T cells, these are T cells flowing onto microfluidic chip and you can see uh, right as the T cells are flowing, T cells are about 4 microns uh, in size. right. So, uh, uh, T cells, these are T cells and like I said about 4 micron in size, okay. So, what is the idea? 
the idea is that let us say a given patient hmm, we take the cells from tumor hmm, and we grow spheroids right with the patient cells we grow spheroids with the help of patient cells these cells are extracted from the patient right from the tumor region so let us see how it looks like when you extract these cells which are cancer cells right and you want to grow a spheroid in the laboratory then you have to load these cells in ultra low attachment 96 well plates okay and this is example of b16 f10 cells spheroid formation over 72 hours first is 24 hours image you can see it is 24 hours in 24 hours it starts forming spheroid it is not ready at 48 hours you can see it is uh, the cells are uh, growing and developing uh, in the 96 well plate and there is a media for providing nutrition finally around 72 hours we can see a spheroid formed using b16 f10 cells right we will be loading this spheroid in our device and learn the efficacy or evaluate the efficacy of our drug that's why we are understanding how does a spheroid looks like when it is formed from the cells uh, uh, from the cells how how it is formed how much time it is taken right so about 72 hours we can get a uh, a spheroid. Now, let us this see this uh, diagram. It is very easy, very easy, do not get too much tensed, right. What we are interested is just immuno checkpoints. This is a cell, this whole thing from here to here this is our cell hmm? everything is cell okay and there are several checkpoints so what do you, what i mean by that i'll give you an example i'll give you an example suppose you suppose you go on a uh, so you can you can look at me if you if you can so i can show you an a correct example okay so suppose i am driving a car right on a toll road right and i should have i should have uh, a pass that i can show it to the uh, to the toll toll booth that okay this is my pass and let me go okay, let me allow to go through that uh, toll booth right so if i have this pa pass then the toll booth guy will allow me to pass on the toll road or if I get a ticket and I show that okay, I have paid he will allow me to go past the toll road. If I do not have it <laughs> then what will happen I will be I have to pay fine or I, I can be in jail for not following the rule right. So, in case of our body, every cell has to show the pass to the T cells. So, whenever T cells comes to let us say this is our cell, this is T cell, whenever T cell comes it checks okay, show me your pass, if it shows the pass it will go further and this cell can survive. 
if the cell does not have that pass then this T cells will start prosecuting this cell and it will kill the cell. Okay. So, when you talk about this pass these are the immuno checkpoints. Okay, immuno checkpoints you get example right you, you, you I hope you understood the example same thing like toll road you take this example it is very easy to remember. So, now what are these different passes or different immuno checkpoints that a cell can show to the T cell that a cell can show to the T cell right. So, if you see the screen there are certain immuno checkpoints starting from ox 40 L O x 4 0 L then there is P D L 1 there is C D 80 right to name few C D 80 or C D 86 P D L 1 or P D L 2 right uh, there is a ox 40 L. So, when you have this immuno checkpoints the T cells would have another checkpoint so that it can see right, it can in, it can talk right. So, when we have PDL1 T cell would have PD1 if you have CD80 this will have CTLA4 if you have OX40 L T cell will have OX40 you see that is how it can interact. So, if we are targeting uh, one of the immune checkpoint that is OX40 L then T cell would have OX40 if we are if we are looking at P D L 1 T cell would have P D 1 if we are talking, uh, talking about C D A T T cell would have C T L A 4. So, there are this lock and key mechanism available with T cell and the normal cell or cancer cells with which they communicate and they understand where everything is going well with the cell or not. Okay. Now, what we are interested we are interested and in general the community immunotherapy community is interested one of the aspect is if I stop this PDL1 if I block PDL1 the T cell cannot find PDL1 so PD1 cannot interact with PDL1 and T cell may start killing the cancer cell or if I block PD1 on the cancer cell then even there is PDL1 on my cell which is my cancer cell if I block PD1 on T cell if I block PD1 on T cell then since T cell cannot communicate with cancer cell T cell may start killing the cancer cell right because it cannot talk it cannot communicate the immuno checkpoint is absent that is of our interest. So, we will be learning a immunotherapy drug called NTPD1. NTPD1. NTPD1 means it will block PD1 on T cell. So, if it blocks PD1 on T cell, T cell cannot interact with PDL1, right? what will happen to C D 4 T cell is C D 4 T cell is C D 8 right. What will happen to C D 4 and C D 8 ratio? If I use N T P D 1 if I block P D 1 on T cell what will happen to C D 4 C D 8 ratio. So, we have to study this particular property using our device using our device. Okay. Now, having said that having said that you see in vivo in vivo there is a dendritic cell C D 28 and C D T C R there is a resting T cell when there is this kind of communication be between uh, dendritic cell or uh, dendritic cell and resting T cell T cells gets activated in vivo means within body within body. Okay. So, if we want to perform similar mechanism we can use dynamids to activate this T cells how dynamid dynamid will have NTCD 28 
and anti CD3. So, this will again cause the resting T cell which is our naive cell to activate this is just a mechanism okay? that is the role of dynamids. Okay. Now, let us come here this image that you can see here is called transwell. Transwell, T R A N S W E L L. Okay. So, it's a well with pores, which are less than four microns. Less than four microns. Now, I told you the T cell size is about 4 microns. So, T cells cannot pass through this filter, through this well, T cells cannot pass through it. Okay. Now, what is the uh, present study? Present study is using static platform, static platform, okay. in that what, what is the mechanism? melanoma spheroids let us take an example of skin cancer. Okay. So, melanoma spheroids which we have seen in the last slide how the spheroid looks like are placed into the matrigel, matrigel right this red one is matrigel. Now, you load the T cells and see the interaction between T cells and matrigel, T cells, matrigel and of course, your spheroids this will interact right this will interact. So, our control would be control would be control would be T cells with matrigel containing spheroids right the spheroids are melanoma spheroids melanoma spheroids this is our control there is no treatment after 48 hours 24 to 48 hours we will see cd4 cd8 ratio using flow cytometry analysis using flow cytometry analysis. Okay. Next step, next step would be you treat this T cell. So, our experiment would be T cells treated with immunomodulator like NTPD1 and placed placed on transwell in matrigel with melanoma spheroids. Again wait 48 hours or 24 hours and see the CD4 CD8 ratio. Now, when you treat T cells with NTPD1, like I said, we are blocking NTPD1 on T cells and we want to see what is the effect of blocking PD1 uh, on CD4 CD8 ratio. This is a static way of performing the experiments and you will see a certain uh, signature in CD4 CD8 because you are treating the T cells or you, uh, with the immunotherapy drug and you are allowing the T cells to directly uh, communicate uh, with spheroids right, uh, in a static manner. The change in CD4, CD8 would be because of the release of chemokines uh, as well. Okay. So, now my point is, is our body static? No, 
what is our body? Our body is dynamic. When we, when we take a drug, this drug goes to a particular place and stays there? No, it flows with the help of blood, right? It mixes in the blood and flows to the blood. So, why to perform static experiments when our body is not static? That is the first question, right? That is the first question. So, we will we will see in the in the next module what we can do uh, to create the dynamic platform, dynamic in vitro platform to perform similar tests that we have just discussed and where exactly we are lacking. All right. So, understand immunotherapy once again whatever we have discussed, I will see you in the next module and we will discuss in detail what kind of experiments and what kind of device we can design that can evaluate the efficacy of a given immunotherapy drug as well as it can uh, act as a patient centric platform. Till then you take care, I will see you in the next class, bye.